Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here once again. I hope you're having a great day. So here's a change that I'm going to be perfectly honest. When I read it the first, I don't know, 15 times, uh, I missed what they actually did. And if you're an electrician, uh, I think you're probably going to like these changes. This, uh, this really decreases the box support requirements when you're supporting boxes by conduit systems. So Article 314, Outlet, device, pole, and junction boxes, conduit bodies, fittings, handhole enclosures. 314.23 supports for boxes and conduit bodies. The allowances for raceway supported boxes were clarified, and really I should say reduced because it's a lot more than just clarified. So 314.23E and F are the two subsections that we're going to talk about. E talks about when you support a box with a raceway and the box does not have equipment inside the box, right? And when I say equipment, I mean receptacles, lamp holders, devices. Uh, 314.23F talks about when we do have that equipment in the box. So starting with E, enclosures up to 100 cubic inches or more, or <laughs> enclosures up to 100 cubic inches may be supported by two or more conduits that are threaded wrench tight into the box or into hubs provided the enclosure does not contain or support wiring devices, luminaires, or lamp holders. And then each conduit must be secured within three feet of the enclosure or within 18 inches if they enter the same side of the enclosure. Okay, so this is a violation, right? Here we have a box, it's supported by one piece of EMT, and that is a violation. According to what we just read, we should have two threaded conduits that thread into the box, right? You can't even just use threadless connectors on Rigid or IMC with lock nuts. They've got to thread into the enclosure. Well, let's take a look at what the exception has to say. Single gang FS or FD boxes, as well as explosion proof outlet boxes of any size, or conduit bodies that are not larger than the supporting raceway, may be supported by one piece of IMC, rigid, PVC, uh, fiberglass, or EMT. Okay, so that's a pretty big change, right? So now, if I have an FS or an FD box, which is what we typically use outside, uh, as long as it doesn't have any raceways or wiring devices inside the box, you can support it with one piece of EMT. So before it was two pieces of rigid. Now it's one piece of EMT. So that's a pretty significant reduction in the requirements. So looking at this conduit body, I mean, obviously there's no way to support it with one conduit. How are you going to do that? Um, but you know, if it was, uh, if it was just an FS box, in fact, let's take a look at the next picture. 314.23F. So the box on the left, is exactly what we just described, isn't it? That's an FS box, and it is supported by one piece of EMT. That is now code compliant. That was always a violation, right? And a, a very common one. So that's allowed by 314.23E's exception. Now let's take a look at F, because it's two different sections, right? This box does not have a receptacle. This box does. So the one on the left is 314.23E. The one on the right is 314.23F. Enclosures up to 100 cubic inches containing devices, luminaires, or lamp holders may be supported by two or more conduits threaded wrench tight into the box or hubs if they're secured within 18 inches. Okay, so this is a violation. Uh, there are two conduits, right? But they're not rigid and IMC. They're not threaded into the box. It looks like we have a piece of EMT, and then we have another piece of uh, liquid type flexible probably non-metallic conduit, but that's certainly a violation, right? That would have to be two pieces of rigid or IMC threaded into the box. But they did make an, a change to the exception here. One piece of IMC or rigid may support a conduit body if it's not larger than the raceway size. So right there, stop. That's been in the code for quite some time. So this picture here, we've got a conduit body with lamp holders, right? One piece of conduit threaded into that uh, is compliant. But now it can also be one rigid or one IMC 
to support a single gang FS or FD box or a single gang explosion proof outlet box of any size. Now we have to be careful here because this rule still requires rigid or IMC, right? So if it's supporting equipment like this, it still has to be rigid or IMC. If it's just a splice box, then it can be uh, EMT. All right, exception number two. Unbroken IMC or rigid may support a box if you comply with all of the following. And boy, is it a list. Maximum length of unsupported raceway is three feet. Okay, so let's stop right there. This is a violation, right? I mean, we all knew it looking at it. Uh, but from that point of support to the light, three foot maximum. So we know right off the bat this violates. Maximum length of unsupported raceway is 36. Supported portion must be at least 12 inches, right? So I need to have at least 12 inches of supported conduit, and then I can go up three feet. The luminaire has to be eight feet above grade and three feet from windows. If it's a single conduit like this one, the luminaire must not extend 12 inches beyond the entry in any direction, 20 pounds maximum weight, threaded wrench tight. So there's a lot of hoops that we have to jump through if we want to use that exception. So that one didn't change. All right, so there you go. A reduction to the box supporting requirements when you're using raceways to support the box. All right, we're still gonna stick around in Article 314 a little bit longer. We've got another rule to talk about next in 314.27, which talks about where you need ceiling fan boxes. And I think you're gonna like that change. It's a very nice clarification uh, and a reduction in the requirements. So I hope you'll uh, stick around for that video. And I hope whatever you're doing out there, you're doing it safely. Take care, everybody.